a very eminent anthropologist. Uh, so I welcome uh, Professor uh, S. Sumati for this special lecture today. Uh, dear students uh, and, and, and my learned uh, uh, faculty members, uh, Professor Sumati is well known to us, perhaps may not be so well known to the students because uh, she has not been uh, very regular in our seminar platform. But uh, Professor Sumati, uh, she was a professor at uh, a professor of social anthropology at University of Madras at Chennai. She is one of the most uh, well known, she is one of the most respectable. Uh, social anthropologist of our country, uh, had her education at, at uh, University of uh, Chennai, University of Madras at Chennai, uh, where from she did her PhD and MPhil in anthropology. She had her graduation in sociology. Now she has published a lot. You would expect such a person of eminence to have uh, publications in very, many important journals of repute. She has also nine books to her credit. Uh, not only she is uh, very popular in India, when I went through her uh, CV, I saw that she has been a visiting scholar at number of universities, starting from, uh, she has been a dad fellow uh, at, at, at Passau, Germany. She has also been a Charles Wallace fellow she has taught at Queen's University, Belfast in 2006. She was also a Fulbright Nehru visiting uh, fellow in 2010. She also was a guest fellow, research fellow at University of Tours in France in 2019 from October to November. And recently uh, she has been uh, a research fellow at Johannes Gutenberg University at Germany. And the best part about uh, Professor Sumati is that not only she's a great academician, she is what I would truly call a practicing anthropologist. Uh, she not only does academics very well, she has also been associated with areas where anthropological knowledge is used, applied, significant, important for functioning of the society. She has been member of number of important committees, which include the very important committee, which looks after, which takes care of verification of community certificate. And uh, based on her work, she has given a recommendation to university, uh, has given a, uh, she has given a representation to the state government, which has become part of the policy. So this is a perfect example of how our research, our findings can become part of policy. So Professor Sumati represents that, that model of how it has to be done. Uh, not to mention such a person would be recognized for her effort. She has been a well recognized and awarded person. She received the Tribal Recognition Award by Institute of uh, Homeopathy, Therapy Research and Foundation. And in 2018, she was awarded the Sister Nevidita Excellence Award. It's quite a prestigious uh, prize award, which is given by Ramakrishna Mission Kolkata, West Bengal, for her service towards tribal community. So it's my great honor. It's a great privilege on behalf of the department. I welcome Professor Sumati to our department to talk about uh, a very important and significant area of contemporary times, artificial intelligence and the ethics of how artificial intelligence should develop in years to come. So Madam Sumati, the platform is to you. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. I'm really honored and uh, humbled uh, to hear all your words. We have been reaching to many, many uh, uh, no, uh, positions, but still whenever uh, you hear from good words uh, from the young scholars like you, it always gives a lot of uh, confidence and uh, responsibility. That, that's the first thing I'll say. Whenever I hear something good about me by the others, 
it makes us feel more responsible and uh, always we also see how best we could also keep up those words and uh, see how best we can move forward and uh, play a, a role model uh, for the younger generation. And uh, at the outset, I really wanted to thank uh, uh, Professor Saraswati Avicholi and uh, uh, Sasdeva sir and uh, the, the entire team who have been organizing uh, this uh, talk. Dr. Mahajan also, man. Mahajan, yeah, 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 yeah. So thank you, sir. So uh, definitely, uh, now that the entire team, when they asked me to talk about it, and uh, uh, for me also, no, like that's what I that I was uh, sharing. Uh, it is uh, relatively a new topic, uh, but uh, as Mitra has rightly pointed out, uh, as a sociocultural anthropologist, you always venture into, oh, you think. Uh, everything around you is anthropology. That, that's what I always uh, is uh, shame with my students that thinking anthropological is the, is the right uh, concept uh, that we all have to perceive things anthropologically. And whenever uh, uh, you read, whenever you observe, whenever uh, uh, you seek certain attention and everything uh, uh, sounds me that anthropology is uh, giving me a sort of an understanding about the issues around me because uh, we the people always try to understand uh, and uh, through culture and uh, culture is everything and uh, and uh, the, this is the this is the way you know like when uh, i was uh, given an opportunity about uh, this project uh, at, uh, i felt already i was within i was inside uh, and uh, this area also and uh, nothing goes beyond anthropology and particularly uh, the cultural component uh, so this is what i have been doing and uh, i was so fortunate uh, to be a part of uh, this project so after that i've started uh, reading uh, regularly and systematically and uh, trying to have a scientific understanding about uh, what is artificial intelligence and what is computational social sciences and uh, and uh, i've been uh, given an opportunity to sit with uh, many international uh, uh, forums uh, after taking up this uh, project. And uh, I was consciously you know, attending all the conferences uh, as uh, both in uh, Germany as well as in uh, 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 France. These are the two countries uh, I was invited and uh, they really wanted me to explore in this uh, area and uh, requested to contribute and uh, see how best we could come out with uh, at this uh, understanding of cross cross cultural studies uh, as uh, including artificial intelligence and computational social sciences uh, before getting into my uh, topic i just wanted to know like i'm a very very serious reader of newspaper and uh, and that's what you know when i uh, see in the newspaper uh, the thing which i observe i really don't know it is vice versa and uh, Everything looks anthropology for me. And today, when I was opening the paper, uh, Times of India is my regular uh, one full page covers uh, about artificial intelligence, uh, intelligence, and uh, all the experts. So uh, right from um, corporate, academia, healthcare, and all the fields, many, many, many fields, and uh, so many uh, researchers who have been contributing and who have been working in this field. Uh, has ultimately said one thing consciously how this social component is very very relevant and uh, as an anthropologist i always try to understand that is social is nothing but social cultural component and that's how uh, it has been the every word which i have been reading and every concept that they were uh, trying to um, try to give an uh, clarity about the at uh, the, the this, uh, machine learning and technology and all uh, all technical terminology algorithms and all these things they used to talk but uh, one common word that all the scholars of this all the experts in this entire uh, uh, page i could see and has talked about how the social component is very very relevant and hence i felt today i was really really happy that uh, know that we are in a very very right day and right uh, time uh, that uh, that the younger generation and uh, all the budding anthropologists and uh, established uh, as active engaged uh, anthropologists who have achieved uh, in your mid career and uh, I thought that you all should uh, give little bit of thinking about in this uh, in this area 
and both the social cultural and all the field I, i'm not saying that all the branches uh, we have been every time talking about the branches of anthropology and uh, and this uh, uh, any branch uh, i am confident that we could uh, uh, or any area of your focused area of interest have uh, some relevance uh, and to connect yourself with this uh, is a big uh, big time uh, um, concept called artificial intelligence and so as you all know that when uh, and uh, during levistrosian period uh, mentioning levistros name itself has been felt uh, that you are intelligent you need not talk about his binary oppositions and all those concepts but talking about and mentioning his name uh, has been felt that uh, we are intelligent and we are trying to understand things at least knowing his name it's in uh, himself has been felt you know that it was great and similarly i think uh, this uh, concept of artificial intelligence uh, and should become a byword of uh, the the developing world and developed world and everywhere and universally it has been accepted and uh, we the anthropologists have a very very big space uh, is uh, waiting for us uh, to contribute uh, avitali i think i'll go with the powerpoint now yeah good so the title of my uh, topic uh, today i thought uh, i can share with you is uh, one is definitely this artificial intelligence the magical world or the, the by word i could say particularly in cross cultural studies because uh, i was uh, as uh, given this uh, project and which is uh, basically a cross cultural studies uh, next uh right from the day one all disciplines uh, and all theoretical uh, uh, schools of thoughts uh, as talked about development we try to come out with different uh, and terms and uh, trying to build up this concept of development uh, and uh, right from uh, take our own schools of thought uh, in anthropology the right from evolutionary school uh, diffusion uh, and uh, functionalism structure functionalism uh, so culture personality school uh, and ended up with the postmodernism so everybody was talking about uh, culture everybody was talking about development everybody has felt that how this concept of development is very very dynamic like the culture and how this concept of culture and development is intermerged and 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 uh, you know intertwined and one cannot be understood without the other this has been and hence the term and the concept itself has uh, underwent so much of criticism right from the beginning when the evolutionists came out with the unilinear and multilinear and universal development and uh, the diffusionists felt uh, how the center periphery uh, concept and the functionists felt how the phenomena could uh, explain the whole uh, component of uh, of uh, changes and change growth uh, or the betterment and what not no? like uh, even today i always uh, felt after reading so much on developmental theories uh, is i still have the word, is that the right word is it a betterment or is the better how this culture specific community specific development has given us a, as a alternative uh, thinking about uh, this concept of development so i am sure that all of you have uh, at least will accept that how this process of development has uh, given so much of understanding uh, to us and everybody trying to move forward uh, or way forward uh, so whenever we, we, we these are the terminologies uh, are very very common among in our colloquial language also and every individual feel that they have to grow up and uh, that they are not uh, physically or biologically that they have to move forward uh, socially politically and what not uh, so the postmodern theories uh, one point has been insisting that how the whole process of this development has been imposed on every individual this point is one of the most serious uh, aspect that it has been really imposing that's what uh, ultimately we will end up how this technology is trying to impose or trying to dominate or trying to uh, create an impact at every level or in everyday life uh, so but this has been consciously criticized by the social scientists very seriously 
critics also argue that post development perpetuate cultural relativism this is another uh, uh, concept which anthropologists are very very conscious about how this uh, is uh, cultural relativism bavarian theory of uh, cultural relativism as uh, as putting certain things as top and uh, certain things as down and putting in an hierarchical manner and uh, something as uh, in a binary also something is superior and something is inferior or something is developed and somebody is underdeveloped and developing and what not so this is another thing which we have to always uh, is uh, this is a point which has been raised by the anthropologists consciously at every level and minimizing this uh, they also brought out another concept called ethnocentrism and uh, we were trying to put things in a very very um, horizontal platform and see how we could uh, minimize this uh, linear concept and make it things as uh, more or less equal it is not only uh, the anthropologists but also the other social scientists that were consciously saying uh, how this discrepancy discriminations uh, and uh, stratifications could be minimized uh, and ultimately created uh, an equal uh, or equity bringing about equity in society so this is an other concept uh, which has been uh, consciously pronounced by the developmental uh, uh, theorist Vygotsky's uh, studies. Uh, there are a lot of uh, psychologists who have been consciously uh, uh, putting uh, uh, their uh, contributions uh, in the whole process of uh, of this uh, as uh, sharing knowledge or communication or transforming. Which uh, normally the anthropologists how you transform knowledge or transform your values, non-material cultural component to the next generation. Uh, so these are the, th the the things which has been consciously so one point here they say is how you interact communication how you transform in what form even today also no like i i always uh, don't know for the, the the day you have given and past two three days i've been consciously thinking about how am i going to interact how, what am i going to oh, impart or from my understanding or the way i am putting certain things i am very conscious that i don't want to uh, create an uh, an uh, confusion in your mind or at least as a teacher it is your responsibility to minimize uh, these confusion minimize bias and this is the one thing which has been consciously talked about the psychologist uh, very clearly so the another point is multidisciplinary studies also proved because uh, fortunately i had a wonderful opportunity right from the beginning in my university that where i had done almost all un uh, projects which are all multidisciplinary in nature so working with multidisciplinary uh, consortiums uh, as uh, given me uh, i was another thing i also wanted to share with the younger generation that uh, your methodological uh, understanding and particularly anthropological uh, research methodology has given you and more particularly i could say the qualitative research has given you such opportunities given me such opportunity to work in this uh, so i was almost in every project as an uh, and uh, not particularly as an uh, an uh, anthropologist i could say but more as an uh, methodologist qualitative methodologist so this multidisciplinary studies uh, have consciously uh, highlighted uh, the relevance of uh, culture uh, which was uh, ultimately responsible for developing the uh, ink and that leads to highest form of uh, order of functions so the, as you all know the development anthropology refers to the application of anthropological perspectives uh, to the so this is what the perspectives what i mean is the every approach the methodology the the, the the observation technique the focus all those uh, the participant observation the, your uh, empirical understanding your intensive field work all those approaches have ultimately uh, uh, given so much of space and uh, contribution uh, in the development studies so, so by 2050 it is assumed all the studies almost all the multidisciplinary studies uh, is consciously telling that uh, how technology will dominate uh, particularly with this uh, artificial intelligence uh, and smart assistants being uh, a common place uh, while the use of uh, augmented and uh, virtual reality 
continues to increase and uh, this pandemic has already has uh, introduced uh, this uh, virtual conferences and uh, continuously we are in uh, in a virtual mode of uh, communication and trying to meet and uh, uh, this new normal situation is definitely has uh, given so much of learning i i, I don't think uh, no like without this pandemic uh, like uh, the the these uh, these communication and virtual reality also would not have given so much of importance particularly in india like uh, wait, we always have uh, have a problem with our infrastructures and other things but that's so, of uh, no at least uh, the other uh, great learning is uh, this virtual uh, realities as uh, now going to increase and uh, there is again uh, a caution to all of us how artificial intelligence can or the may or trying to impact us in every every day life everything will be smart connected and data driven that's the truth next so this is the one thing which has been i am very very uh, con uh, conscious about it uh, so people in india always think that artificial intelligence is the is the uh, uh, is the complete uh, um, property of the computer science and technology and uh, be the social scientist and so that's the attitude because i have already spoken in my own uh, university and hardly people could connect to us uh, particularly the the technology Uh, department and computer science and all that but one is the fact is uh, this they could not able to something that is complementary and spill over benefits of this so called artificial intelligence this so called technological development uh, is so 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 important uh, it may say it is uh, just uh, a small noisy uh, component but uh, that is the uh, root cause i could say that's the origin of uh, of everything until you you deal with that uh, at uh, issue it cannot uh, create or it can you cannot expect uh, the output which you are expecting ai led innovations will be reflected not only as a direct contribution to specific uh, issues but also inspire complementary innovation and spill over benefits across uh, socio economic all fields you know there is no exception i could say even the remote uh, a uh, tribal development which we are working that's what you know like how this could also you know through the policy that's what everything everything has been done and been uh, introduced with the artificial intelligence and the every policy and being a welfare country all policies will reach to the uh, vulnerable communities and hence the artificial intelligence might have spillover benefits and spillover uh, impacts on uh, nook and corners of the areas and every person uh, in the world the emergence of artificial intelligence and computational social sciences that's why gaining uh, relevance i i think now you could understand it's all deal with the people and it's all about people and it's all about communities it is all about uh, out your way of living yeah. so that we call it as culture and uh, so hence uh, we have lot of scope and we have lot of space and we have lot of responsibilities in dealing with uh, or in understanding this so called technologies so, and uh, the, the the particular uh, uh, particular uh, analysis technique which has been constantly talked about in the, this ai technology is observational analysis uh, where we think uh, anthropologists always think it is art to the participant observation is uh, is the most uh, crucial uh, tool uh, which we normally use in our field work and try to understand uh, and uh, participant the non participant observation and come out with observational analysis and using narrative analysis discourse analysis uh, uh, so all those observational analysis uh, what not uh, so when the, these uh, technologies uh, is uh, while using the coding and uh, and uh, they, they talked about this observational analysis uh, and with existing data uh, become a need of the hour so what i see is you know, when i read these uh, uh, papers technical papers also i i don't think i am an odd man out of that uh, at uh, component uh, and i always feel yes this is what we have been doing in uh, anthropology when we were doing our field work uh, and when they talk about big data i only remember the thick descriptions uh, and uh, how much uh, rich data we used to generate uh, through our uh, feed work uh, 
there is you know that's how uh, uh, while reading the technical people while reading the published the technical paper where i could be able to understand what this uh, technologists are trying to tell us so, this ma massive data of all kinds of human behavior are now available you know much better the younger generation knows about what is twitter what is uh, wikipedia and every details about is uh, available in front of us and the other part where they always talk about uh, while talking about this big data is uh, or social scope the social scope uh, of is a framework for understanding internet social knowledge very very beautifully they have constructed this uh, and uh, only to however efficiently you have collected your uh, social data particularly the social cultural data uh, as uh, which we normally call it as thick descriptions uh, from from different sources using scientific tools it may be a case study it may be a focus group interview it may be a key informant interview so many scientific tools we uh, use it uh, but all those uh, especially the knowledge around this uh, not stable but dynamic in nature today that's why re studies and uh, and uh, or uh, become very very popular uh, no like uh, so the village studies itself no like uh, you go with the malinowski's uh, studies and again the latest study about from the under islands and what they are and how they have changed and what is the impact on uh, on various uh, policies on these people and how do they perceive how do their uh, world view could be perceived today is uh, very very important uh, so the, the the ethnographic studies we have been constantly doing in our uh, our um, field work and uh, i have been constantly updating my uh, uh, ethnographic when i was doing this uh, community identity and uh, and uh, the, the bible which we consider it as uh, thurston's volume of uh, caste and tribes and uh, people of india volume later uh, about uh, people so about uh, the minimal information about uh, about uh, the ethnographies uh, and every time i say the line of argument uh, which they have taken to construct that book uh, is very very important uh, so how that that is why the re studies and you write it again and write to publish uh, so that you update uh, what is relevant uh, and what is needed uh, at a contemporary level i hope you all could understand uh, what this social scope is trying to do using this big data and how this framework is uh, is uh, creating uh, uh, a check in uh, uh, taking up uh, here you also should always think about the other the question of interpretation uh, how do you interpret uh, these things so there are so much of work is going on uh, on working with vedas not here uh, at, in germany i have seen people are working on vedas and trying to understand the uh, and trying to come out with the reinterpretations and the re studies and uh, and uh, and suiting it to the, the 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 today's world next how ai will uh, yeah 2021 has come and people have been studying and uh, one is this adversarial ai that's what i really wanted to take it up and uh, discuss uh, it has been uh, adversarial ai is a machine learning uh, technique that attempt to fool uh, models by shaping deceptive inputs uh, research shows that by changing only one pixel very beautiful you know changing one word one term one uh, click uh, will uh, definitely create a havoc can possible havoc or sometimes a positive thing also but as a researcher we are more worried about the negative impact rather than the positive impact that's that's the one thing which i always say so your your research output uh, which is a very big challenge among the the social cultural anthropology is rewriting these ethnographies of uh, what has been written uh, minimize the uh the 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 subjugation and dominant component and minimizing the 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 the, the, the hierarchical positions and uh, which is very 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 important uh, in today's uh, is world and uh, and um, revitalizing that's what i have used uh, theory of uh, revitalization uh, in a recent uh, study when the government asked for uh, or uh, study about a vulnerable community called uh, Palder community, we are listed out in uh, uh, SC list of Tamil Nadu, who have been fighting for three decades uh, 
and wanted to change their identity as uh, as uh, devendra devendra kulavelala and uh, 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 highlighting their uh, livelihood and uh, which is the evidences are so beautifully we could collect it uh, all evidences the archaeological evidences the literary evidences uh, and uh, and the other uh, empirical evidences has proved that they could be definitely they were called by that name and how this term pallar as later on has been derogatively used and how this class conflict between the dominant community and subjugated community has as referred that term but in etymologically it is not derogatory that's what i say it is very very clear in a, in a pluralistic society like us in a linguistic variations uh, and so much of dialects and all that uh, every word has got its own meaning as far as the culture is concerned uh, so that one click one uh, uh, one uh, the way you interpret uh, might uh, create an havoc among the communities that is the one thing that adversarial uh, AI has been always talking about this and how malicious development and uh, advanced digital technology and systems that have the ability to learn uh, from past to future to reason uh, or discover meaning from complex data. Such uh, adversarial AI machine learning systems are in need of uh, high quality disaster uh, to transmit uh, these algorithms and so liable to data poisoning. Uh, the data poisoning attacks are very, very uh, clearly uh, discussed in uh, adversarial algorithms uh, and uh, very clearly you know how malicious the users are uh, that has also been very clearly highlighted uh, the technology enables uh, armies of killer uh, uh, robots and uh, ai enhan en enhanced uh, cyber weapons so these are all you no know, like uh, don't look at it as a technical terms but look at it in a scientific and social side social perspective i think we all could understand what it uh, means so uh, so a cannot solve so this is the one thing you no know, like uh, ultimately the article ends up uh, a cannot solve unknown problems the problem itself is culture specific we have seen in many uh, studies for example i can tell one thing uh, domestic violence has been uh, in uh, taken up as a serious uh, area of research among the unicef once uh, and uh, they identify the fishing communities uh, it is more among the domestic violence is more among the fishing communities because uh, wife beating is so common among them but when they we have been working with the fishers uh, for about uh, two to three decades again i could say but the night when the husband is alcohol consumed alcohol the he beats morning i had seen how it has been retaliated by the wives and literally she pushes him through the uh, leg so what i was trying to she is the person who keeps the alcohol in the boats and we have been constantly why you are keeping and you know that after consuming he beads and all that she has her own reasons for it so defining domestic violence the universal definitions is not so applicable to certain uh, culture specific communities certain communities particularly and the culture and the way they perceive uh, if, uh, this differently it may not you cannot come out with the uh, generic uh, solutions uh, uh, for this uh, domestic violence particularly to this community that's what i really wanted to tell you so when you study about uh, i'm not justifying that uh, at uh, beating uh, the wife is uh, just, no i'm not uh, i'm just because uh, she retaliated and it is not uh, out uh, no like uh, tit for tat uh, i i'm not saying but the whole uh, problem is different here alcohol consumption and uh, hard work which they face uh, nature and uh, and uh, the, the 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 infrastructures which have been developed uh, is not so conducive to the community and uh, this is the one community always even after tsunami you know like they could receive because death is so common among them so they don't uh, cry uh, like uh, agricultural communities so, so these are the things which i really so but definitely this adversarial uh, Uh, and AI uh, has proved how this uh, is. Uh, how do you perceive certain things? And that's a, that has been constantly talked about. It next. Yeah. 
so we have almost come to the 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 the, uh, the, the computational uh, social sciences uh, ai is a computer science branch that's what we all think but definitely has proved uh, how this uh, is reasoning system is uh, continuously uh, your intelligence is, uh, is the is the prime uh, uh, concept uh, used in social sciences uh, dealt by psychologists anthropologists and uh, and uh, uh, everybody so ai based technologies for public service provisions uh, and uh, sticking it uh, these component very uh, because our public provisions public service uh, provision is always to uh, particularly uh, you know like ai is uh, more uh, uh, seriously we have to see in our country like because uh, being a pluralistic country and uh, so many communities so many cultures so many languages uh, i think uh, compared to the western countries we are all the more uh, to be very very serious uh, about it uh, and uh, here comes the ethical component uh, where uh, uh, right from the beginning uh, and uh, mitra was also saying how this uh, ethical uh, it is more in a research uh, ethics uh, and uh, uh, this uh, ai as uh, as uh, forced to take uh, this ethical component uh, into considerations uh, and um, particularly the societal core values uh, as taken into considerations and see how best uh, because uh, it is all coming out with the uh, perspective of helping uh, vulnerable and minimizing uh, bias and all that uh, but ultimately it should not create uh, more havoc among communities that's the, that's the major uh, uh, contribution for computational social sciences next yeah this is and uh, when you come to predictive research is the is the major uh, uh, perspective in uh, ai and computational social sciences it was uh, uh, more into developing ai system in variety of social contexts i really wanted to tell you you are know, when i was there during my uh, research fellowship in france and uh, this ai conference has always been organized by the department of philosophy department of anthropology department of psychology and department of sociology it is not the computer science department alone it is not the technological oriented uh, departments alone uh, hardly hardware has been discussed it has always been talked about uh, the, the, the the softwares and the coding and how this coding uh, should be uh rightly get into the the system and uh, and uh, really help the and really uh, help the process of development uh, so one is uh, this uh, uh, ai has been in uh, uh, started utilizing or started applying in uh, predictive government predictive policy artificial judges uh, predictive psychiatry marketing uh, job recruitment uh, and uh, even in publications publishing and many other areas uh, next yeah so the simple logic behind uh, this concept you know after seeing all these technical things uh, as we rightly pointed out intelligence uh, we all know what is intelligence it's nothing but a faculty of knowing understanding reasoning thinking and interpreting i underline the word interpreting uh, so the whole epistemic the way you understand things and the way you perceive things and the way you put it out uh, and ultimately your culture says this is right and wrong so these are the things that been determined by the society and that's what you take it uh, hugging and uh, and uh, the way you do your uh, greetings is all been uh, and uh, thought and uh, perceived and uh, reason out by your society and you start interpreting this is the way i should uh, identify myself uh, as an uh, and indian so th this is what uh, and there are a lot of intelligence has been talked about by the uh, the, the the academia one is intrapersonal uh, uh, intelligence interpersonal intelligence language intelligence uh, musical intelligence so many intelligence they have talked about it but uh, every intelligence this is the one thing you no know, howard uh, granner has very clearly said that little bit of uh, any intelligence uh, is within every human being that that's that, that that's a uh, uh, same thing uh, which has been uh, taught in education also that uh, every teacher has to feel that every individual in this world has got something plus and that has to be strengthened so that's the pedagogy you know like every time try to put us but very unfortunately we we, we don't uh, practice in uh, everyday classroom also but every child has got something positive uh, and that should be considered as a strength and that should be strengthened because that's what the culture tells us 
culture has been passed and she learns or he learns and that's all the thing and he or she knows what is good and right and uh, that is the way he understood the world so and be the anthropologist has been every time talked about the world view and uh, and uh, its relationship with uh, with the developments also the concept of emotional intelligence has been consciously you know right from the beginning also i said uh, talked about the psychologist uh, and uh, daniel goleman has uh, proved its application that emotional intelligence is the is the is the very 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 important component for your survival AI uh, consistent of designs, uh, designing designs that produce results that maximum utility. The, the, so, so you have to optimal utility and optimum you to get the benefit uh, out of the performance when executed on a physical level. Because that's what everybody is uh, is the thinking today. That's what the development. If something comes, I should get the maximum optimal. So, how much are I could consume? I should consume so that I should get the benefit of it. So this has been consciously developed in all our mind. Every individual has got that in mind and everybody is trying to sail in the same uh, uh, line. Right, next. Avichali, if time is there, you can always caution me also. So time. Okay. So next, next. Yeah. So this is another thing, human intelligence and artificial intelligence. I don't want to go deep into it because uh, every time you now we try to differentiate and see what are the differences, what is the plus and what is the limitations that has been almost highlighted in all the journals and the studies are also taken that into consideration. One has got its own plus and one has got its own down. So the ultimately I could say is uh, next one. So there are generalizations also about how both could be uh, uh, contribute to each other and complement uh, and ultimately give uh, the benefits uh, is, uh, so that uh, how this uh, human intelligence, how this artificial intelligence can go hand in hand uh, and so that uh, the ultimate benefits uh, can reach the, uh, uh, particularly the vulnerable, which has been meant for it uh, and uh, create relatively equal society. Next. Yeah, this is another uh, concept which uh, I thought I should uh, share with you because uh, as an anthropologist, uh, we are uh, more uh, familiar with this uh, anthropomorphism and uh, technomorphism has come. Anthropomorphism is the attribution of human traits, emotions, and uh, intention to non-human entities. Uh, it has been used in storytelling and all that. Uh, when it comes to technology, anthropomorphism is certainly more problematic. Uh, so this is where we have to be very clearly wait and see how best we could uh, combine both. Uh, consider how artificial intelligence is described like a human right, which is not how AI works. Uh, so there are many studies uh, has talked about uh, people's misunderstanding about the AI potential uses, uh, attempting to apply in inappropriate way and uh, failing to consider application where it could provide more values. Uh, so one is uh, more importantly, the anthropomorphism contributes to our fear of progress, which often leads to full of, uh, of uh, uh, blown techno panics. Uh, we are so this uh, again uh, i can tell you in one word uh, the anthropologists were always uh, is in all our multidisciplinary projects uh, they were always uh, is uh, perceived as a uh, pessimistic uh, and they think that we are against uh, development and all that uh, but uh, very later uh, they try to understand how this uh, is small details small practice small uh, uh, cognitive understanding about certain things uh, one of my units of uh, projects uh, about maternal anemia, simple thing. They perceive that iron and folic, all pregnant women thinks, uh, particularly in Tamil Nadu, they think that uh, iron and folic acid uh, it, uh, will uh, create uh, darkness. The, 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 ultimately, they produce dark child because of the thing, uh, because the tools are, uh, are dark and tools are black and they think uh, ink, uh, the child. This small, uh, psychological because the doctors uh, come with a hue and cry and say the epidemiologists always think it is not true yes it is not true scientifically but psychologically they all think and hence they don't consume iron and folic acid so so these are the things that, but you cannot undermine uh, that they are not scientific uh, their knowledge system uh, be documented 
and particularly about the metallurgy the, the classification and the taxonomy which they came out about a single word anemia marvelous i think this is what we call it as a local knowledge and indigenous knowledge system and anthropologists have been constantly working on it and uh, we felt that this is what uh, their understanding it is not that they are not that they don't require any awareness program but uh, their cognitive perception is that and hence it is not very easy to change it takes longer time to explain and see how best or we should also come out with an alternative method uh, and uh, to minimize the maternal anemia so this is what no they always think that these missions will kill the bipedal uh, killing missions and uh, it is a threat uh, for not only in a, but survival itself is a threat so that's what many people have said uh, but the studies have proven it is not that's what the artificial intelligence and technological studies uh, or particularly computer computational social sciences along with that has also proved uh, you you need not so worried and you need not scared about and get away with this anyway it is going to come and you should know how you could be able to oh, keep yourself inside and uh, learn this uh, as we all learned today about uh, this pandemic and uh, you know how uh, we have learned how to be inside and how to wash previously we never used to wash whatever we get we eat but now consciously at least watching all our children are learning so it is becoming uh, the new normal is also you know like uh, it is affecting your survival that's what the survival of the fittest and you tend to adopt and that's what your culture also teaches next yeah this is an again uh, the major component in our projects also almost in all ai project the social assessment component has been taken very seriously because all mega projects all un projects we cannot move forward without conducting the so impact assessment and social assessment studies so ens it is very 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 important and yes also is uh, is within and it is it cannot go beyond or without it is not top on that and uh, it has to undergo the social assessment and uh, so the assessment raised why a is overlooked by very smart people uh, is the smart people do not think a computer can ever be as smart as they are and this is uh, hubris and obviously false that's what the the, the hypothesis says uh, working with the ai the firm tesla uh, tesla says uh, with confidence that we are uh, headed to situation where ai is vastly smarter than human no doubt about it though the time frame is less than 5 years from now but that does not uh, out uh, that everything goes to hell in 5 years it just means that things get uh, at uh, wired that's what uh, the mainly they say you are going to be connected that's what when other came people were uh, no like really worried uh, so is that my uh, bank account will be revealed and all that but definitely it is uh, that is what is uh, the transparency accountancy and uh, all these things uh, we have been uh, in talking in more rhetorical sense but uh, not in practice uh, that the whole uh, democracy has also been very seriously debated uh, by the political scientist uh, so how this accountability and uh, transparency is uh, but definitely ai will bring uh, a sort of an, uh, an uh, systemic manner and it will be transparent uh, and uh, but as we think uh, that uh, the human being or including the vida anthropologists cannot be too scared about it but we are very consciously going to insist that the social component is very very social cultural component is uh, very this is what i constantly i've been uh, talking to my uh, i consortium and uh, uh, proving that we plays a bigger role uh, all in this than the um, the than the technocrats uh, so i have been constantly telling and uh, we have achieved also that, that, that the project is all about more of empirical studies uh, rather than technical studies next yeah the future is uh, is of ai looks beyond rhetoric no doubt about it uh, and uh, emerging intelligence is not at fault for any mistakes it makes within society it simply does, does what masters train it to do so this is where you no know, like i've been every time says uh, how this interpretation how you teach how you inculcate how you transmit it where uh, the, the 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 social cultural anthropologists have been consciously doing it so that's why you know the whole cultural component if you could uh, see 
so every cultural trade is science that's what we i strongly believe so it has been given certain frills attached with certain frills may not give explanations directly but if you could see the every cultural traits is scientific keeping the time and space into consideration the then time and space today it may not have some relevance but the then it has started and sometimes it is also naturally get diluted so this is what the the, the, the scientific and this is what the strength of of culture also i could say very clearly where uh, they were, where the, the ai ethics has come and everybody has talked about it uh, consciously the book uh, inventing world 3.0 reveals how this can done with solution that beyond the rhetoric of, of uh, all you know like uh, we, we may say you know no, but we should go beyond and look at the reality and in, incorporate those component in uh, ai next definitely it has come to india also very consciously we have been talking and uh, india also has taken it very seriously and particularly uh, and being a pluralistic society and so much of divide and uh, being so hierarchical and stratified uh, and uh, which is all the more very 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 relevant uh, and uh, in the in india and almost all the aspect has taken uh, this ethical component uh, in ai uh, ethical component in the process of uh, ai into the introduction next yeah this is again an important uh, concept which we have to look at things ai and uh, information communication technology as always uh, is uh, talked about and go hand in hand with the uh, uh, sustainable development goals we all know what is sustainable goals development goals uh, these people have came out with 17 uh, in uh, aspects uh, acts with sustainable development goals is also talked about it and ai and communication technology is also talked uh, talked about it no poverty zero hunger uh, good health and well being the uh, quality education gender equality clean water and sanitation affordable and clean energy decent work and economic growth industry innovations and infrastructure reduce inequality sustainable cities and uh, and uh, responsible consumptions and climate actions life below water and life on, on land peace justice and uh, strong institutions institutions we mean the social institutions partnership for the, the goals next yeah i have come to that so these are the 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 the, the, uh, the concepts and theoretical and perspectives and aims and everything that, that uh, has given uh, so much of responsibility to the social scientist uh, that we play a major role and uh, we are the most important uh, contributors in the process of ai development this is the symbol uh, uh, our project uh, name is called ai fora and symbol designed by the team this is an ongoing project and just uh, funded by oxwagen uh, uh, and next very beautiful it has been designed so this is the core consortium there are about five different uh, uh, institution all institutions belong or in uh, germany and they are the core consortiums and all the, all, all of them represent and um, the principal investigator is from uh, this is what uh, johannes gutenberg university her name is uh, uh, petra and her uh, designation is techno sociologist very very intelligent lady she is from mainz and uh, i was so so happy to meet her and i also last november i was there and uh, 19 november i was there and uh, i presented and uh, that's how i was uh, incorporated into the uh, consortium and uh, i am an indian partner and i'm so happy to learn and all all of them has some strength and uh, the consortium is really you know like uh, it is more on sharing and uh, learning uh, mutually next this is the case study partners so there are six countries uh, are trying to come out with their own case studies so china estonia germany india spain usa okay so china there's uh, shanghai institute for uh, science of science uh, institution is involved uh, from estonia it is university of uh, tartu and germany there are two universities are involved as i said uh, it is uh, 
Johannes Gutenberg uh, University and uh, uh, Augsburg University, University of Augsburg. And in India, there are two institutions has been chosen. One is the University of Madras. The other one is the Indian Institute of Information Technology, Kotem. Uh, the next one is uh, Spain, the University of De Gorna, Gorna and uh, in USA, an uh, institution called RAND Corporation is involved in this uh, project. Next. Yeah, these are the, she's, uh, Petra is uh, the principal investigator, the down, uh, they are technical uh, contributors. Uh, myself and Rajan is uh, Indian uh, partners, uh, others or uh, China, Spain and uh, and uh, altogether, uh, we are uh, our, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12 people on, uh, in this uh, project. Uh, and uh, myself is the, is the uh, uh, Indian partner. I'm uh, here also, no, like I really wanted, not that I really wanted to boost myself, but there are two institutions are involved and Madras University, and I'm a social anthropologist, and Rajan is technical. The, the whole project is for three years. The whole uh, project fund is more allotted to two years, and I'm continuously for three years. Only one year has been given to Kotem. And the main thing is whatever empirical understanding which we are going to generate and gather and enumerate and coming out with our understanding about our case study, uh, we play a major role. The funding is also more allotted. The entire uh, project proposal, our component is bigger. The work plan, which we play a major role. Now. So wh what I'm trying to say in this is, uh, in an AA project, we social scientists play a major role. That, that, that's what, uh, not that I'm, uh, I'm uh, putting somebody down. No, it is not. They, they started the whole project, try to understand the, the social and empirical understanding, uh, not the technical component. Technical component, they thought the technocrats can convert this as a code. That is what is their response. Whatever you teach, whatever you give, that will be converted. So that's what I really wanted to tell. Next. Yeah, the aim of the project is the project investigate the, the status quo of AI based social assessment underlying the distribution of public service. Everywhere this public service has been taken up, taken into consideration. So the finding should enable better AI technology for social health assessment. This is what the main aim of very broad, very uh, focused, very clear aim. So again, you know, like uh, when we were con con when we were uh, constructing this uh, proposal, uh, uh, you learn so much. I had two opportunities in uh, German projects. One, the first one is the urban self organization. I was associated with the. At the Passau University, and they are the referees for this project also for me. And this is the second project. So the proposal construction itself is a mind blowing experience. I could say you will learn so much, and you will get so much of opportunity. That that's what the the, the next generation should get into such project. That that's the interest. That this that fellowship gives so much of opportunity and. Once you identify your host university, the Germans, once they started the trust you, never ending, it goes on and on. And uh, it's a lifelong opportunity for the, for the researchers and the academicians, people like us. You, you, you really know that there's nothing called retirement. You keep working, working, working until you work. Next. Yeah. So this is where the, the, the flowchart as, as uh, very clearly uh, says how you uh, construct your data sets and clearly come out with the taxonomy of variations uh, with your big data populations. So the variations are very, and the anthropology is the one subject which always encourage variations uh, rather than the similarities. Uh, so it has been taught by my teachers uh, when I was uh, doing my master's and this is so deep rooted into my mind. Uh, and I always think, oh, how beautiful these uh, uh, statements are. Uh, so we appreciate the differences. Uh, and uh, with all our, uh, our, that's why we go for case studies. Uh, a single episode of life, you try to uh, use that and try to substantiate your argument and why it is different. Uh, and sometimes why it is similar also. 
so definitely no so you take that and you get into the processing of data by using uh, ai technologies and then come out with the categories as much as possible uh, maybe sometimes i was also thinking about the diffusionist uh, theories uh, how they were uh, sometimes gone extreme and came out with the, uh, the multiple uh, uh, no like the categorizations and then that has been criticized uh, so i think we are the right people uh, to choose uh, where to limit and uh, where not to uh, limit and all those things and ultimately it should uh, uh, the, the public service provision uh, should see to that that it reaches uh, the last person next yeah artificial intelligence for assessment in more and more countries policy makers increasingly use artificial intelligence and uh, particularly in uh, public service provisions and uh, state benefits among their uh, citizens so this is becoming uh, so policy and especially country like us the welfare nations which is solely believing uh, that these welfare programs and welfare measures can uh, uplift and give them a better uh, way of living uh, so the perception attitudes uh, discussions and uh, acceptance of ai use for public policies uh, vary from one country to the other as to the types and degrees of ai implementation so uh, contextually to understand and jointly shape the role these are the things which we have identified in the project uh, and uh, we are trying to come out with uh, a model future uh, uh, societal scenario and uh, aiming to create a, a, a better society and continuously getting our empirical understanding and how best we could more responsible in technology adaptation also next yeah these are the research questions i thought it would be of uh, of uh, how were social assessment uh, uh, routines for uh, distributing social sciences organized in institutionalized in different international uh, uh, yeah i think uh, yeah change public service and i think uh, i have almost given explanations about this so i think i will also put it in a public forum and uh, if people are interested they can also get into the ai for a uh, website and uh, you can view everything next yeah uh, the design is very very beautiful you know as i said uh, it is an empirical research it is not uh, the more of uh, qualitative research and uh, multi stakeholders workshop uh, december we are planning this december uh, we are planning to conduct a uh, multi stakeholder uh, workshop in uh, chennai i have accepted uh, and uh, given uh, so now i think uh, the pandemic should help us in uh, organizing these things uh, expert interviews uh, media discourse analysis and all those things already we have started uh, and uh, documenting uh, and uh, media uh, announcement about everything and then i am i'll tell you the, the, the next one is scenario simulation competition modeling they are, they try to come out i hope uh, uh, the kotem people will uh, do this and then the government we wanted to help them to create a wonderful ai lab so that that lab uh I, I, that's what they say that the international forum is also uh, thinking uh, that they should uh, fund for this uh, such a wonderful uh, i tech uh, laboratories uh, is uh, to uh, update uh, these uh, as uh, these uh, algorithms and see how best it could uh, and whenever there is a problem arise uh, see that how best we could uh, and, uh, minimize that problem or eradicate the problem and uh, so that uh, the entire public uh, money which we are spending for that uh, program uh, um, should uh, have zero wastage so that that's what uh, it's a, it's a very very uh, big uh, uh, no like uh, highly uh, hoping for the best but i'm confident you now that the, the near future can give such uh, opportunity and using this multi stakeholders workshop and uh, multi disciplinary uh, research can come out with uh, such models next this is the important that the key study matrix i really wanted to discuss with you every country i told you there are six countries has taken the uh, six different uh, germany uh, already they have uh, the, the here the first criteria i could say is uh, the country which is spending so much of money allotted for that particular policy in india it was taken uh, uh, pds public distribution system where the 
AI uh, has already introduced. So already we have introduced artificial intelligence in our, uh, our uh, public distribution system, PDS system, and uh, big money has been allotted. Uh, big uh, allocation of funds I'm talking about uh, is going to this uh, thing. And uh, in China, it was a social credit system. USA particularly, you know, like all sectors, uh, they have already introduced uh, AI, but more specifically the child abuse. And uh, the randas, uh, the results shows uh, that they are uh, spending so much of money to minimize uh, as, uh, child abuse. Uh, and uh, that they are going to take it up. Uh, and uh, Estonia is uh, unemployment and uh, and uh, they have, they are really, really the doles and everything they are giving and uh, the big money has been allotted for it. Uh, Spain is also, they are uh, all, almost all sectors, uh, all Europe countries, I could say that they have, uh, are, uh, AI has been introduced uh, and uh, trying to zero down to a specific uh, thing, which has not yet been discussed. And uh, particularly in Germany, also, it is uh, child abuse and social care has been uh, taken nothing. And in the US, it is more of the gun culture, uh, the crime and uh, all those things uh, that they are uh, taking it. And so much of money has been, public money has been uh, allotted and all our tax money has been uh, in major uh, money is going for that uh, sector. And we really wanted to see how best uh, we can minimize the bias, uh, discriminations, uh, and see how best we could utilize the optimal utility with unbiased uh, approach. Next. Yeah. Uh, the social simulation already I've talked about it. The project tried to analyze, uh, to test future societies in an contextual perspective. This is what uh, where, uh, we always, uh, the anthropologists are more uh, conscious about uh, about context specific, uh, culture specific uh, like, uh, development and uh, community specific development. Uh, and that same thing, you know, the, the, the content analysis also, you know, like uh, context uh, and discourse analysis. Narrative. Every word has got certain meaning. The way you oh, explain, the way you put it, uh, at, uh, the teacher is also so consciously, you know, like thinking, uh, is it possible for me to explain what I have in my mind? And uh, I should not uh, use wrong words and I should not uh, or, uh, give you wrong ideas also, from my side at least. Uh, you might get uh, wrong ideas from other sources also, but at least. Uh, I have been given the role of uh, teaching and I've been given the role of inculcating certain things. Uh, similarly, every role, you uh, know, like being a mother, being a, you, know, you inculcate certain values to the next generation uh, in a righteous manner. Uh, modeling and stimulation provide the appropriate methodology for the uh, scenario and the appraisal for the potential social uh, features. Um, the suitable models, uh, yeah, ultimately the, the uh, project is aims at coming out with the more suitable models underwent all uh, assessments and social assessment uh, technology and uh, see how best it could uh, become a wonderful framework uh, for the uh, for delivering uh, the public uh, policies and public distribution I could say next yeah this is a flow chart uh, I think uh, more no the, the case studies or completely dependent on empirical study. That's what, uh, again, you see, you know, all more of uh, social science and particularly anthropological, uh, now where you talk about knowledge, value, power, money, and uh, repetition, which is not like more into uh, non-material component and non-material culture, and how the agents uh, take this and how this incentive structure has been given and uh, how it can create uh, this uh, flow and see to it come out with the uh, Best best results and optimal results using AI. Next, yeah. So this is the major uh, ultimate output of this uh, project. They said that the AI project aims at uh, responsible AI use in ethically sensitive and highly normative. Uh, 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 yeah, I could not, uh, so this is what the project will, uh, will try to come out with uh, ultimately a better AI lab. Uh, uh, comprehensive, uh, 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 highly technical, and uh, the better infrastructure, 
a bit of ethical and uh, so conscious about uh, uh, inclusiveness uh, so these are the things which has been constantly talked about uh, by the, the 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 partners and uh, and every partner is very conscious about how we could add on our cultural values and and small small no your attitude your beliefs your or uh, uh, the, 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 the simple storytelling has been taken into consideration you know like uh, so the the way you acknowledge the way you reflect uh, act uh, every aspect has been taken into consideration and uh, particularly in uh, public distribution system uh, from then on uh, we have been constantly uh, getting from the second resources uh, as uh, what are the lacunas that is already existing in our uh, our uh, system and uh, where the where the leakages and uh, how the leakage happens and uh, how uh, we could uh, control those uh, leakages and the corruptions and uh, and the bad practices and so many things which we have been constantly uh, documenting it uh, so because uh, for about past one year we have been doing this uh, and uh, there are about uh, four uh, students have already i've taken into the project as a research assistant uh, and uh, so one uh, student has been constantly doing this work and uh, and uh, the, whenever the paper uh, cuttings and all those things you know, whenever the event uh, related with the uh, pds uh, public distribution system and the case study is also is from tamil nadu and uh, because the tamil nadu is the the first ai has been uh, installed in uh, tamil nadu uh, by the central, central government and we have also documented those events uh, and wanted to see how best it is working and where does uh, there are there is an ngo who has been constantly putting a case against uh, uh, a particular pds shop uh, Uh, where there are so much of leakage and so much of uh, waste and so much of malpractice has been happening all those things uh, we are trying to document both plus and minuses uh, and how this pandemic has uh, really helped uh, uh, the pds has helped uh, identify and distributed uh, and um, extra uh, uh, provisions uh, for the the for the for the vulnerable and uh, and all those things also we are we are, we are trying to analyze and we are trying to document how things are happening how uh, the the system is trying to work and where does it go and i think once the empirical study has started I, I, i'm sure that we can uh, work on and get more uh, or uh, reality into uh, document and see those data can give us a better picture and ultimately all the six countries uh, when they come out with their, uh, their uh, case studies uh, and uh, the, the 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 difficulties and uh, if it is a bear infrastructure uh, problem i think uh, we should see how the, the biometric is uh, most of the time here is not working so those things has to be taken care of next yeah yeah the glimpse of the issue so this is a supreme court case which has been 17th march 21 as came out uh, uh, how the biometric uh, is uh, is not worked in uh, in uh, some of the places and uh, that we have documented uh, so what i am trying to say is uh, that there are a lot of lacunas uh, even after introducing the uh, eng ai particularly in public uh, distribution system and there is a long way to go and such empirical studies should give uh, a better uh, uh, outputs and that can uh, create better reach better inclusiveness better uh, solutions for the vulnerable and the real need next i think it's in yeah thank you so much uh, i tell you i hope uh, uh, <laughs> no with a given time uh, i i was really trying to put it uh, so now it's open i think if i can do it thank you uh, thank you thank you so much dr sumati professor sumati that was uh, a fairly enriching lecture uh, professor sumati tried to introduce to us a new world which is as of now very little exposed explored uh, at least uh, in our department i don't know many people who are working on this issue this very important issue and uh, she has pointed out that artificial intelligence uh, which is going to change uh, how we live how we carry out affairs affairs and uh, how 
our life is organized, how everything works is going to see a major change with greater application of uh, artificial intelligence in our life. She has also highlighted the major role which anthropologists can uh, play in this uh, revolution, uh, artificial intelligence revolution, which is knocking at our door. And uh, she pointed out uh, three areas wherein uh, uh, this can be significant. The first area she talked about is what we call uh, the creation of the artificial intelligence. That means the input. You see, whenever we talk about artificial intelligence, it has to do with human beings. And human beings are not just biological beings. They are cultural and social beings, along with uh, psychological beings. So a uh, major aspect of understanding of artificial intelligence, the creation of artificial intelligence software, uh, the cultural input is very significant. So to create that uh, cultural uh, uh, input, the role of anthropologist will become uh, significant. Second area where anthropologists will come to play a major role is in terms of uh, when it comes to application of artificial intelligence. In application of artificial intelligence, uh, anthropologists will be of great help in terms of bridging the divide, the digital divide, the artificial intelligence divide, thereby enabling artificial intelligence to reach out to the most, and at the same time, enabling artificial intelligence to be made more uh, context uh, uh, specific and context relevant. So, therein again, it will play a very important role. And the third aspect has to play a major role is in terms of uh, the, the, the aspect of uh, artificial intelligence. Now the forum is open for discussion. May I, uh, Dr. Avi, can you doubt the questions? Sir, um, do we have any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah. There is one question from M. D. Please. Yeah. Can I read up, ma'am? Uh, uh, the person is saying, ma'am, thank you for your guidance on the topic. Uh, you say that AI is becoming integrated in all spheres of anthropology, but according to you, which field of anthropology yeah. does it dominate the most? Why and uh, why yeah. will AI diminish anthropology? I don't know. I, I think there's something wrong. Oh, which field? That's what uh, I was told. I think uh, this is what I said in the beginning itself. Uh, here itself, no, like I don't. You take up the first four branches, so the major branch. That's what uh, anthropologists have started with whether it is biological or physical anthropology, social cultural anthropology, uh, archaeological and linguistic anthropology, and other subfields applied and whatnot. You know, it goes on and on, all development, development. I strongly feel that you all, whoever is uh, expertise in their own uh, subfield, uh, can contribute because uh, that's what uh, I have been, you know, many lectures. Uh, but it has to be multidisciplinary. You, know? you have to be with the other discipline. And you should also know open enough to get, take up their run. But your strength is always anthropological perspective. That's what I strongly wonder whether in genetic studies, I feel amazing. You now, the genomic studies can come out with the beautiful you know, and minimize. And already, you know, the, the concept of race, and we have been very critically, we have been using it. I think uh, this is a wonderful opportunity of using and uh, because AI is nothing but uh, minimizing the bias and see and coming out with a different sort of a perspective, no? And so and archaeological, uh, you know, like the evidence is past and see how best uh, that the very clearly they said past, present, and future. So it could how this could uh, and linguistic anthropology. I think uh, not many people have uh, every time uh, when we all meet. Uh, sort of, not many people are there in that. Even social cultural anthropologists feel so bad, not many experts are hardly few. So, Vishra sir is the only person now which uh, comes to my mind and uh, 
and uh, KK Mishra is also he is an expert in that and uh, not many people have taken up that uh, but so much of opportunities are there uh, in all fields wherever human is I think uh, yeah I can and and you can take it up and you can contribute so that's my strong feeling. Oh, Ma'am, there is another question from Dr. Vipadhi. Uh, she said, many thanks for this very interesting talk. It is interesting to see the case studies that participating countries have chosen. Could Professor Sumati elaborate the criterion yeah. behind choosing this? Many thanks. Yeah. Uh, this is the biggest challenge, I could say. Uh, the proposal has also has not taken so long for us to construct. Uh, but uh, justifying your case study and uh, justifying the component uh, and uh, keeping the the the, the data available data into consideration and uh, it is almost like sample selection so uh, petra was uh, literally uh, traveling to all countries uh, and uh, sat with the uh, the partners uh, and then uh, uh, after almost two, three days, you know, continuously they were debating and debating and uh, uh, accumulating the big data and then uh, and uh, justifying the sample selection. Uh, and uh, here also same workshop uh, we conducted in uh, Chennai. And uh, beginning, uh, I was thinking education, uh, you know, that that's the one thing which is almost uh, every time uh, I was thinking either education or health. Already, you know, like uh, that this is what we are so influenced by our uh, uh, sustainable millennium development goals. And these are the two things which came into my mind that uh, I was trying to do. But after that, uh, the data is when we were generating and the welfare measures and all that, uh, they were more attracted by the PDS, public distribution. But in reality, the money which was going into PDS, uh, and it is one of the country we were distributing and all welfare measures, whether you take a, a, a political manifesto or electoral manifestos and all these manifesto, at least one, uh, every candidate will be uh, telling uh, that how hunger can be, you know, like uh, uh, completely eradicated and uh, how you can give uh, minimal uh, supplementary, uh, you know, like uh, food to the uh, poor. Uh, and uh, the another thing is, uh, it is proven that our country is, uh, is uh, though we have claimed ourselves as a uh, <coughs> developing country and competing with China and all that, uh, the reality is uh, the basic needs is not yet been, uh, you know, like uh, satisfied. The first thing is food and uh, and uh, shelter and uh, water, and uh, this is again a very big challenge which we are facing. <coughs> And I think uh, that's how uh, we have zeroed down. And when the data showed uh, how much money has been wasting in the, that public distribution, the other card, one ration card, uh, and when uh, Modi came out with uh, with that uh, policy of uh, one nation, one ration card, uh, which is uh, so much of information. And uh, the another criteria is that uh, introduce uh, that there should be uh, some. Uh, uh, pilot work at least have gone and uh, introducing AI you know? and uh, I, 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 we all felt uh, that uh, more suitable case study for India is uh, is PDS uh, and that's the time you know, like all these uh, so when BJP government also has came out with the other card and continuously with other things and introducing AI so it has all fallen in line and uh, uh, so this is the the best thing I could see is sample justification. Uh, the similar exercises happened uh, uh, in the US uh, and uh, other countries also. So we were uh, having uh, uh, virtual uh, workshops and uh, discussion groups, uh, uh, which is very clearly said uh, how much where they have uh, very clear uh, how much money is spent, where does uh, they could not able to achieve, and. Uh, why it is not, why they could not able to achieve, why still it is a very big problem and how to achieve that. So these are the questions which have been constantly raised. So when they came out, uh, the, 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 the so much of discussion on gun culture uh, and so much of data on that, uh, when Rand Special presented it, uh, so we were all you know, like, uh, we've learned so much. So so the, the, everyone has you know, like wanted to identify the best case study and see how best we could uh, improvise. 
so when we uh, the output also immediately came into my mind uh, when we were able to come up with a beautiful AI lab, uh, particularly for uh, this uh, uh, public distribution, and every household is getting uh, and every individual household is getting their proper food, and uh, if we could able to. Uh, to to satisfy their hunger, I think uh, I consider that as the greatest uh, success. But uh, that's how every case, a lot of thinking and a lot of analysis uh, has gone in and uh, justified the, the samples, justified the cases. I hope I. Uh, um, there's uh, another question from Soman. He yeah. um, he, thank you for a very insightful and informative lecture. And he wants to know, could you comment on reliability of current phase development of AI in qualitative data analysis? Once again, no, I'm sorry. Um, he said, uh, could you comment on reliability of current yeah. phase development of AI in qualitative data analysis? Uh, I oh. could say the reliability, when you're asking for the reliability, the whole question of uh, reliability only has taken it as a as a big challenge and uh, criticized and critically it has been perceived. And that's why this uh, multidisciplinary uh, uh, research project uh, and Volkswagen is very, very particular about uh, out, uh, 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 this uh, area of research, I could say. So there is so much... Uh, of money has been uh, uh, allotted and funded by this uh, is a company. This is a car company, and uh, as we all know, it's a, it's a, it's a more of a light uh, uh, car. And they, they are also knowing as a part of their uh, corporate social responsibilities and as a part of uh, uh, universal uh, uh, services, uh, they thought that it should uh, such a because uh, it is uh, the, the the research is uh, not like the ongoing research in AI particularly is proving that uh, it is going to dominate us. That's a, that, that's a fact which they are saying. Uh, but uh, when it is again a question. So, but uh, preparing ourselves to uh, meet out uh, it's, uh, the, this pandemic only has you know, like uh, really cleared many of my questions also. So what is this new normal? What is this lockdown? And fortunately, we are also into another big project with the uh, France University of Tours on uh, comparing uh, this uh, lockdown particularly. We are not, uh, uh, definitely we are not epidemiologists to study about what is this uh, COVID-19 uh, and uh, what is this virus it's all about and what is the uh, fatality and all those things. But definitely, you know, this concept of lockdown, so which is all new to us, but uh, at, uh, no, like we have all started experiencing it and uh, how it has really altered our uh, lives. So, and now we are coping with the, with the ongoing uh, system and see how best we can vote and take the best out of it. So, particularly those who are in academia, we are waiting how to get the best because uh, we are also missing our classrooms. We are also missing our wonderful students uh, and see your smile and everything. No, like uh, So you are, you are questions, your critical thinking and your outlook and everything you have to say. But still, what is the alternative? And Chennai is becoming a, a no outlet and we are also expecting a next lockdown and I also feel bad. Oh, it is not coming to an end. But let's see how best we could move forward. So this is what the survival and I'm sure no, like uh, this is going to create an impact. That's what at least we have to be keep ourselves ready to Cope up with the system and see how best we could also be part of it and see where does it, the, 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 which you are thinking that it cannot, it's my privacy and where this also has been, you know, the security and, uh, and uh, cyber and all those things has been discussed and, uh, and how do you have your own privacy and this concept of privacy is more among the Western countries than the, the, the Indian countries. So this is again a beautiful study we have studied in urban self-organization. And I was amazed, you know, even the vulnerable, uh, homeless, and the concept of privacy, and think that you can't enter into the privacy. Whereas here, so getting into an slum and then bedrooms and everything, you take it for granted as a researcher and get into it. And you think that you are a scientist and you got all the right to enter into their uh, bedroom. And they also share, share their uh, 
everyday affairs about addictions wife beating and everything they also said so what is privacy and how the side of privacy and everything is going to which we are going to face it and uh, equip ourselves right? these are the things which uh, is very very important and see how much we could uh, take it up and we can't uh, simply say uh, no no let it come and uh, no that's that's not a right uh, attitude that's what i think uh, you see uh, artificial intelligence is playing is playing a very important role in creative industry art creative industry in music creative industry in terms of uh, creation of uh, you know stories and other things uh, wherever these cultural expressions are involved yeah 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 now they're going yeah. they're playing a major role in it yeah so yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 so when uh, the artificial intelligence take over this process of mm. creation what will be the impact of uh, this on the artist Yeah, on yeah. the uh, on the on the small time uh, uh, you know uh, the creative yes, yes. thinkers yeah what yeah now i understand them uh, yeah yeah are they going to be uh, waylaid when uh, when artificial intelligence take over uh, the creative uh, industry art yeah. music yeah yeah super it's it's a very uh, very sensitive uh, question uh, that's how i think uh, uh, mitra one is uh, you no know, any uh, development the concept of homogenization comes so uh, heterogeneity has been uh, minimized and uh, this homogenization uh, and uh, particularly the, the postmodernists have very seriously talked about the multiple realities and uh, every this is what you no know, i was also very Yeah, that that that's why I said uh, if you could take uh, our pantheons, uh, particularly you know every community has its own pantheon, uh, their own mythology, and the way the way they interpret and the way they associate the, the community with the uh, epics and so much of studies has gone into this uh, right from the day one Redfield singer, Milton singer, and all those people. No, uh, no. Sum Sumati, Sumati, my my yeah. my direct question to you is. you see when you create these softwares when yes. you create these programs yes. for artificial yes. intelligence yes. they involve input right yes. now the input which is given to the machine yeah. right yeah input comes from the people you know they yes. don't come from anywhere else no no they it has come to from come from the people for example right you yeah, have artists. to give them the notes you have to give them the yeah. tunes yeah. you have yeah give them yeah the Uh, so only then a symphony can be created yes, now yes. all these all these are the creations of people now you yes. give them you feed it to the machine yes the machine yes. creates a symphony it creates yes. music it is yes. sold in the market right yes. now is the royalty going to come to those who yes. in first yes. place created those those notes those sounds those rhythms absolutely, those music absolutely no this is what the community yeah, knowledge and over in the in the in the in the way side you know the whole thing then goes to the one who creates the artificial intelligence is it no, it should not it should not it is like uh, the knowledge system where the same thing has uh, has been discussed also even in sustainable development it has been discussed about it that's why i said yes. all how all is that but as you rightly pointed out these are the components which uh, as in uh, researchers we have to take it uh, and see yes. it as the people i i fully agree yes. with you mitra maybe th this is what no it is a small uh, error if we commit in this as you rightly put it the whole credit goes to the 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 the, the constructors artificial intelligence constructor and that but this has been very seriously discussed by the anthropologist about the community knowledge and uh, and uh, right to information ra, 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 this uh, is uh, that there's a very how the, that's what the kani tribes has got the how the knowledge system is should uh, ultimately reach the entire community not the uh, the, the corporates uh, uh, which has ultimately not uh, took that uh, aspect and uh, added some values value additions uh, would have been there i'm not denying it uh, 
no no as you rightly pointed out the symphony you know like uh, can definitely uh, create uh, miracles and it can internationally reach also but ultimately you know the, the, the inputs the part the part and, and the ultimately the whole the, 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 that uh, concept uh, which we are very very conscious about it that's why i say it repeatedly mitra we the anthropologists can alone can uh, and uh, no like uh, I, i i sometimes also raise my voice during the meetings uh, because similar when you read this i have never thought about it but when you came i could immediately think about the theory which we have studied in the function as a what is part and a whole how this part makes the whole how this part this is very very uh, simple but that's the reality so as you rightly pointed out the small last person who contributed to that art should get that mm. we should i really don't know because even today i could not able to understand how this uh, kotem people uh, particularly as a indian case uh, how are they going to understand because when they presented uh, she was so upset uh, now the german uh, principal investigator was very upset they also presented uh, their uh, component and uh, there is one word about uh, gender so when she asked about that's the only word social science word uh, that they incorporated but when she asked not even single technocrat i i am not uh, boosting a my i think where we could as a social scientist we were trying to understand the technical terms of their uh, air uh, computers and ai algorithm whatever they say we are trying to relate it and try to see oh this is what they are trying to mention us but the simple word gender sensitivity is the word which they have incorporated in the powerpoint but when she asked for explanation uh, those people could not able to explain it another thing observation see the entire institution has got so much of funds and so much of good infrastructure but not even a single women were there immediately she asked me why there is not even a single women in this institution i myself was not clear about it as an insider i am an indian i am in the no it's a next state for me it's a south india no no answers from that uh, principal and she was totally disappointed about that institution even today sorry to say this she was so disappointed and uh, she said uh, what they have in, they have put it in the powerpoint and uh, when we asked how are they going to deal that issue they could not able to tell the process and this is what uh, our technocrats such insensitive about the concept called social cultural all the more i could say so without that how do you know you think whatever you put it inside that has to be taken it for granted and you lose uh, 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 who are the people you are mentioning will be never included and we talk about social inclusion these are the things which we which we should be very conscious about it uh, I'm sorry, but this is what uh, we are very, very carefully we have to deal with it and make our stand very uh, firm in the consortium. Otherwise, uh, uh, now this I've learned from my teacher, uh, Professor Sudarshan, who always you know take up anthropological uh, perspective firm and first he believes that we play a role. And you called and I'm inside. I have not come on my own. So that should be there. I hope Thank you so much, Dr. Sumiti. It was Thank wonderful, you. Professor Sumiti. It was very enlightening to you. hear your views, your perspective about artificial intelligence. And uh, we end with a very positive note that uh, artificial intelligence is going to change our life. It promises to deliver a lot. But to realize this promise, anthropologists have to play a very important role yes if we yes. throw culture out of this expression this equation then artificial intelligence will remain the magic wand as development was yes. which promised a lot but delivered so little yeah, so with this yeah. note uh, we end uh, today's uh, uh, special lecture and i really want to thank uh, professor sumati
uh, Professor Sumati is a very tall person. So uh, she has lived up to her tall uh, stature today. It was wonderful to hear, ma'am. And it's a great privilege. And uh, we really enjoyed, uh, thoroughly enjoyed uh, this uh, lecture of yours. So on behalf of uh, the department, on behalf of the research seminar group, I express my gratitude and my thanks to you. Thank you so much, ma'am. And you. I thank all the participants who are present here today. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. We feel really great. Thanks. Anything to say? Saraswati Garu? Nothing to say, ma'am. Actually, uh, the I, I already wrote, uh, I didn't, I don't have any question. I already wrote there, techno sociology, something you mentioned. Uh, that is wow. very interesting. So and the people. <laughs> she actually, uh, Saraswati, she uh, did her uh, engineering first, uh, Petra. And uh, I had seen many scholars like that, you know, I was talked here, we are so, you no, know, like, uh, even in the university, when I was studying, every department functions like a unit, even our teachers doesn't want us to mingle with the next department. So we are so conscious about our, and uh, you think your, your domain is ultimate, but uh, it is really break, you no, know, like uh, the, those who have uh, finished their uh, our engineering could come to uh, social sciences. And after that, you know, after engineering and technology and IT uh, specialist, she did her sociology and her position itself. And uh, she's also a EU member and all that. Uh, oh, such a great, uh, excellent, uh, humble lady, I could say. And so, you know, she shared so much and very observant, very observant. Uh, that's the but, you know, I'm really worried about the last... Uh, End, end, ending note given by uh, Professor Mitra. Uh -huh. <laughs> Madam uh, Sumati is tall and he stood up there, but I think I'm short, so I will never able to. I will be never able to. Maybe no, reach Mitra this height. Mitra always says that whenever we meet. Uh, <laughs> maybe for a South Indian, I'm tall. <laughs> Uh -huh. So thank you very much, Madam, for accepting thank our you, invitation, and you. we really thank enjoyed you the talk. For all the younger generation, and uh, I will tell you, thank you so much for taking. And uh, I don't know, there are many people have joined, and many people have uh, asked questions. And uh, you can always contact me in my email ID, and uh, they have my mail ID, and I'm very accessible in mail ID, no doubt about it. I'm all the time. And at least I would like to share my thoughts and talk about the available uh, because I was also at the international uh, center, director for the international center for our university for a long time. And I know about the available uh, fellowships and uh, sometimes I think the national fellowships are uh, hard to get it. International fellowships, this is the truth I could say. International fellowships are relatively easier. Yeah. All that you have to do is... Uh, constantly touch with them and constantly apprise and constantly modify your proposals. And that's the one thing they expect and justify your, your proposals and methodology. These are the two so things. Ma so ma'am, maybe we will have another lecture from you to uh, how to tap for international uh, funding agents. I will do it. I'll do it. Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. We'll, we'll do it. that and the, where, where yeah. we can also benefit students and be the faculty yeah. members. Sure. And uh, Dr. Ravituli, I just wanted to ask you something you know like uh, how many countries have participated in today's system there i think uh, two three countries i should see bangladesh there was a person from bangladesh who's attending the seminar and there are one or two countries it's not only india and from pondicherry somebody's uh chella sir is also there thank you thank and you and which countries have attended uh, from people from whichever con which countries um dr Levi is from uk um, yeah and then yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe uh, uh, he is very much interested. Uh, yeah. Professor Perumal, huh? And, and there is one from Bangladesh. Uh, yeah, Bangladesh, I got uh, and I was thinking. Uh, yeah. was, uh, it's so, very interesting. So and I think that not only anthropology, but we had uh, students and scholars and faculty from different disciplines. Yes, and, that is also important. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, very nice response on social media, uh, how people respond. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much, and ma'am. Uh, there are around five, six more questions, but I will request them to email you. Will it be okay? Yeah, yeah. I will definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. You can send it, and I will. Uh, yeah. I will. So 
months. Oh, well. Really, I've taken a long time, I think. Uh, so that's why I every time tell the organizer to control my timing. But uh, <laughs> thank okay. you so much. Thank you very much, ma'am. I think we can close it. Thank yes, ma'am. We'll close it. Thank you so much, ma'am. Really, bye.